Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Karishma and joining me is the co-founder and CEO of Coin DCX, Sumit Gupta. Sumit, thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Karishma, for inviting me. Yeah, before we actually delve deeper in discussing about uh, how government's recent regulations have uh, um, opened doors for uh, uh, Indian domestic players, of course, uh, to uh, take this space further for the users, I'd like to know how was 2023 for CoinDCX uh, uh, in terms of the regulatory interventions? Yeah, I mean, it has uh, over the last couple of years, uh, one is 2023 overall from a market sentiment uh, point of view was quite slow. There was not, uh, 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 you know, uh, after FTX, there was uh, uh, market fell down. But 2023, the market started recovering. We saw some traction. But I think uh, now is the time when there is a uh, lot more activity in the market because of uh, impending ETF approval in the U.S., uh, plus Bitcoin halving, which is scheduled for April of 2024. So all of that is now, uh, you know, heating up the market a bit. And now we are seeing over the last two, three months, especially is when we have seen uh, activity picking up. Uh, but but let's see how how the market reacts and, uh, you know, uh, what 2024 has for us. But 2023 overall uh, was was uh, from a compliance point of view, I think it was. Uh, it was an important year uh, in the history of Indian crypto because FIU came up with the guidelines and has created a framework for VDA SPs, which is virtual digital asset service providers to come and register with them. And the objective was very simple. The objective was to make sure that uh, the, uh, to monitor financial transactions, curb money laundering, prevent error financing and all of that. So any VDA SP that is serving Indian customers has to mandatorily register with FIU and then follow all the AML and KYC standards that FIU has imposed in March of 2022 last year. So uh, uh, we have invested heavily in terms of implementing all of those guidelines to the T, making sure that uh, we raise the bar when it comes to compliances, make sure that we create a safer ecosystem for Indian customers. So for us, it was a year of building. Of course, from a business point of view, it was slow, but we have invested a lot and we have worked a lot. The team has made significant progress in terms of making sure that uh, when we talk about a compliant ecosystem, we have a very solid and strong foundation at CoinDCX. Right. Sumit, if I date back, I think uh, a bit more in terms of what happened in 2022, also uh, when the union budget uh, uh, announced of a 30% tax on the VDAs and followed by the 1% TDS that also recently came in. Um, yeah. From on that perspective, let's say an aggregate and average of a couple of months beyond 12 months, how do you see the trading volumes? I'm sure there was some drop initially. Have you been able to recover that? No, not really. I think uh, it's still far off and it was not some drop. It was actually a whopping 95% to 95% plus drop. Pretty much volumes were negligible. Even right now, they are very, very tiny. Uh, and uh, it is largely due to the fact that over the last one and a half years, since the TDS got implemented, and which is very high, in my opinion, 1% TDS, 30% tax, no set of all of that is a very uh, harsh taxation on crypto, which is not good. The government, my request to the government would be to change it, to reduce it, or possibly bring it at par with uh, other asset classes. Uh, but what has really happened uh, with that high taxation is that that has moved people uh, away from platforms that are complying with the tax laws. Uh, two platforms which are not even complying and where there is no TDS reduction, there is no 30% offset. And I think that is not an industry that we want where, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, where, where, where the laws of the lands are not followed. I think, uh, of course, no matter whether tough or uh, not tough, uh, whatever the laws are, uh, players who are serving Indian customers need to follow that. If there is uh, any company, any offshore or onshore player, which is not complying with those essentially puts the customers at risk, which is not uh, healthy, uh, you know, for the ecosystem. So uh, after the tax volumes have shifted offshore, probably 95% of that volume shifted offshore. It's not good for the customers because it's risky for the customers. It's not good for the community. It's not good for the companies that are operating in the Web3 space in India. Plus, it's also not, not good for the exchequer because they are losing out on revenues. Yeah. Uh, they are losing out more than the revenues. They are losing out visibility on what's happening in this space because 95% of the activity is outside the purview of FIU, right? And, uh, uh, you know, I think that this has to be solved. So in a way, I was kind of uh, expecting it, uh, you know, uh, and and uh, because I've, I've heard this concern from 
uh, uh, FIU and government people multiple times that their objective is, uh, you know, is to is to bring everyone under a common uh, purview, common umbrella, so that at least they have full comfort in terms of crypto activity happening. And that maybe once that gets solved, then possibly our hope is that the taxation will also get normalized. It will get, uh, you know, a little more lenient. And uh, overall, we will move one step closer to a regulated uh, crypto and Web3 ecosystem in India. Right. Very, very interesting point, Sumit, that you shared. And um, the fact that you said that uh, more and more people are, because of the tax bracket, are moving to uh, I I uh, the illegal uh, platforms to invest. But I think those could be more of a short-term benefit that they could avail until, until the compliance comes in. You did mention about uh, FIU. And, um, of course, recently they have issued uh, show cause notices to nine overseas entities, um, which has been quite... Uh, um, a earth shattering kind of moment for a lot of players who wanted to move abroad in terms of investing in VDAs because of, of uh, the Indian taxation. Do you see this shift? Do you see this to be a moment of uh, crypto trading shift from uh, um, international overseas borders back to India? Uh, see, Karishma, I think for that to happen, the the better solution is to keep tax at par right uh, or keep tax framework a bit lenient for crypto industry because right now one percent is still very disheartening for uh customers to invest in right one percent tds 30 percent tax no set of all and of this still when you say lenient you mean a reduced tax rate yeah yeah reduced tax rate i am uh you know in favor of bringing it down to 0.01% or 0.1% because that serves the objective. The objective of TDS is to make sure that the uh, uh, tracking and tracing of trading activity or, or activity that is happening in VDA is there. That is what TDS uh, essentially solves for. And that can be done with a lower percentage as well. Why to have such a high taxation framework, which this disincentivizes people to trade on compliant platforms and moves them to illegal or offshore or non-compliant ones. Okay, got it. Um, of course, you know, with the G20 also and following the final meeting by IMF, uh, FSB and IMF had uh, finalized a regulatory paper on, on crypto assets. Now, though that paper did talk a bit about the risk factors, it did not really completely uh, give the contours of the regulation law. How do you read that synthesis paper as for the industry? See, I think it's important to uh, uh, solve risk before governments get comfortable to come up with the regulation. It's a step-by-step -step process, right? And uh, uh, I believe uh, the AML and KYC guidelines that are a, a part of FIU framework is one way to minimize risk, right? As I mentioned, that that will get comfort, that will give comfort to regulators that, okay, if there is any uh, uh, wrong activity or if any risk is coming, at least the government has full visibility. If there is any wrong transaction happening, then STRs are in place. The process, two years back, there was no, even if we want to do an STR, we can't do it because the framework was not there. At least now it is there. So I think it's a gradual process. And uh, the current phase that we are in, where there are uh, registrations for uh, VDA SPs in India, I think it's, it's a step in that direction. While that takes its own time. Uh, uh, it's important that uh, the risk in the ecosystem, which has been highlighted, and of course, there are benefits also that has been talked about, but important from a government point of view to focus on solving and minimizing the risk, protecting the interest of customers. I think those are the priority and we are also aligned with that. That has to be done. Uh, and over time, regulation is in this space, which is a fast moving uh, technology heavy industry. It's not easy. I mean, it's 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 not a three to six month job. I think it would it will take its own time, maybe probably one, two, three years as regulations globally evolve. Uh, but in India, I think we are already moving in that direction. We are already moving in that direction. And I think uh, 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 steps like these, uh, you know, steps like compliances, steps like that, there is at least a, a registration or recognition to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, VDSPs in the country, players like Coindies in the country, I think is a step forward in the right direction. All of that should happen, keeping customer protection in mind. Right. Uh, the high taxation was putting customers at risk, was uh, uh, directly or indirectly exposing customers to potential frauds or scams or interacting with unregistered non-compliant platforms, which should uh, uh, which should change. OK, got it. Um, Sumit, in terms of Coin DCX, what are your plans in the future in terms of diversification? Are you also planning to expand it to a few more countries? I think recently you've made some investments. 
yeah uh, uh, so i think we have always aspired and this is something that personally neeraj and i discussed that okay you know in other industries uh, because there is operational element it's not easy to expand but in web3 space because it's completely technologically native digital native industry uh, you know our aspiration is to have an indian born company and and create that uh, impact not just in india but globally as well because the technology allows you to do that so that's some something which is a long term aspiration that we have uh and the plan was that okay why don't we take steps in that direction so we have of course done some investment uh in 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 player outside india as well and i think the plan is to uh you know achieve the 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 line of make in india for the world uh, and that's something that i believe uh, uh india should also have products and i think we at coin d6 are fully confident that we can we can create a product or uh, you know services which are uh at par or even better than international counterparts and uh because we are very strong in terms of web3 talent out there in coin dx in general india as a country so why not take uh, uh you know advantage of that strength of yours why not build a global company right from india is something that i think uh, we would love to see in fact india would love to see the community would love to see a company like that over the next few years and and uh, uh we we hope to sort of uh, create some impact there at global at global level But you you continue to keep India as your base, right? Hundred percent. India India is our home market. India is our key market. India is something that will remain the heart, is the heart, uh, and and we con- continue to build all of that from India itself because that is where how we can, uh, you know, how we can, uh, uh, you know, create that impact in the Web three space because India has. so far been relatively slow when it comes to web3 sector but someone should come in and take it to the next level in terms of building products and and uh, uh, doubling down on technology which we are doing with coin d6 with our uh, you know wallet offerings and and a uh, lot of things that we have worked on over the last couple of years okay one last question sumit and this is out of curiosity on a lighter note uh, um in the past few years have you seen more users being added i know that the existing users after the all the kind of these regulations may have wanted to move out but in terms of any data that you have and this could be specific to coin dcx do you see new entrants in the field yeah so i think let's divide it into two parts new entrants will come from either new people investing or people who have already invested uh one thing that we are seeing clearly is that people who already have investments in crypto assets which was either on on some of these offshore platforms or some of these platforms which are not under the ambit of FIU there we are seeing good traction we have in fact opened up uh, uh channels for people to bring their crypto assets from these offshore uh, non compliant uh, players to coin d6 in in a very simple manner so there uh we have built the solution we welcome those people and and that is working seamlessly uh so i think that is one way on how new customer acquisition ha- new customer acquisition can happen and that is uh the early signs are decent i think it it will probably uh you know shape out uh, gradually the other side which is uh, uh, new customer sorry to intervene but do, now do you have these customers moving to you after fiu's decision of uh, yes. keeping yes yes so after that only i think we are seeing some early signs of that customers are now more aware about uh, uh keeping their assets stored with compliant platforms compliant fiu registered platforms we are the first one to get fiu registered uh you know when the guidelines came out so customers inherently have a very high trust level on coin dcx because of that we are seeing people already moving funds from binance or other platforms to coin dcx uh, for that matter and that trend possibly in the last 3 4 days is what we are seeing currently and the the channel for customers to uh, store their crypto assets safely is also there with coin d6 so people can just open the app and can deposit it so that is there uh, for people who are investing new uh, there we have not seen much traction much traction i mean of course uh, uh, you know this uh, increment there last couple of months we have seen some uptick but still not uh, uh, big enough because the uh, the high taxation is disincentivizing people to enter into the crypto assets so i think until that gets solved uh, uh, you know the new capital uh, will still come but it will be slower than what it was last you know in 2021 um, i think in 2024 things may be more exciting people, indian customers will prefer compliant platforms indian customers will prefer safer platforms where they know that if i keep my you know crypto assets in those platforms it is not uh, risky it is it will it will not get blocked it will not get banned in future so i think there uh, coin d6 will continue to uh, have 
uh, you know, acquire those customers, continue to, uh, you know, have the trust of those customers. Uh, but I think that will shape up gradually over 2024 because 2024 is when we are seeing the market uh, to be uh, more exciting because of, uh, you know, all of these big events which are halving ETF approval and uh, possibly a good upward momentum in the Bitcoin prices as well. That's a nice subtle pitch to the Indian investors uh, who are looking to, of course, uh, get back to uh, the trading bourses in India, especially for the crypto assets. Thank you, Sumit. And we hope um, uh, the upcoming finance bill union budget brings some good news to the industry. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you very much Jip, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Karishma.